Uh, so there she is in all her splendor. I have put a decoder in her, uh, hardwired. Go down and have a closer look. Good day everybody, welcome to Kampala Road. This is a follow-up to uh, a video I did a little while ago about a model shop in England I visited which was unusual and I picked up this particular model there and I explained that I'd been after a spam cam Merchant Navy class, whatever you want to call it, since I was about 11 years old and um, after various failures I walked into this very unusual model shop, I'll just put a link up there and there it was, so I got it for um, a princely sum of £90. So she's in the sunlight, um, the colour is truly stunning. Um, I can't remember what it's called, Macalite or Machalite or something, I don't know. But it's that Southern Railway's green, it's, it's gorgeous. Um, but it's a grey day today, so it's not really shining through. So she's a 2004, as I've said earlier, um, which means it's pre-DCC chip. You have to hardwire, and that's why I intend to do what I intend to do today and show you if it works or not. Okay, so what I intend to do is take out the um, hardwire, the current decoder that's in there, and put this one in. It's an unrebuilt Merchant Navy class. TTS sound decoder. Hook it up, let's just move her forward just to show you she is actually hardwired. And she's going backwards, of course. <laughs> Try again. And she runs really well, except for just below medium speed, there's a little bit of a hop or lurch. But other than that, as you can see, slow speed, medium slow, medium up, upwards, it's very, very good. And this has just got the standard Hatton's decoder in. So I'm fairly pleased. So I hope I'm not taking a risk by putting in this or hardwiring this TTS decoder. She goes. So loco mounted motor, tender pickups with that uh, sort of touch system. Won't be relied on for quite a while, so we'll see how we go. This being 2004, the motor is here. Um, there are a touch mechanism here to allow power from the tender pickups, which we all know and hate, I think. <laughs> um, it worked at the time, but once it gets old and dirty, it fails. So that's why some of us hardwire in the uh, tenders. Um, and what I'm going to do is slightly different from my example. When I did the Franco Crosti 9F, the plug was here, if you remember, if you watched it. The plug was here and the decoder sat here. But then I hardwired in the speaker into the tender. Given there's so much room in here, as it's basically a square slab, I'm going to see if I can fit in a speaker in there. Okay, so there's the normal round speaker, which would probably fit, I hope. I haven't looked yet, I can't really remember the space situation. Um, but these speakers are sort of a little bit derided on the uh, YouTube and that sort of thing. I think they're okay as long as you surround them with he heaps of blue tack or something like that. The other choice I've got is this one. This is out of my class 43 um, HST. Um, I put two in and I changed one for a mega bass speaker as many people have done in the unpowered power car. Right, I'm not going to go step by step and showing you taking the body off. I'll do that and then come back, etc., etc., and move forward because I'm not going to show you my soldering skills on camera. <laughs> One thing I will say though is this loco is fitted with a speedo cable, which you may have noticed I've 
reinstalled incorrectly. Um, so I'm going to take that off again and you need one of these. Preferably one of these I should say. Sold by Hornby. I'm going to five or six quid. And that can take off the speedo cable here. Yeah. Anyway, I shall we'll do a step by step and see how we get on hardwiring in this decoder. Body off. Very, very easy to do. Uh, and you can see my hardwired. I don't have any of this shrink, whatever it's called. Um, so I'm using this tape, which is not ideal, but anyway, there's the uh, what looks like a 21 pin decoder I put in. 21 stroke 8. Interesting. But what I hadn't realised was, or forgotten about, was this weight here. All this space is taken up with the weight. So examination of the internals of the body, let's have a look at that. Right, so off camera I've just been investigating possibilities of fitting a speaker into uh, the main body. The two square speakers I've got uh, won't fit. Uh, and For some reason, the four screws here, I can only get two out on this one. These two are threaded. So I'm not going to force that out just yet, I may do one day. This other option I had is just too big, it's just too fat. Um, so I've been sort of sitting here pondering how to fit this one in. Um, and pack it with blue tack to hopefully give it some better sound. Now the issue I've got, I think she can fit at the front here, which you can't really see at that shot. But the issue is, there is quite a large, there you can see where the funnel comes down. This is quite a large piece of plastic poking down. It interferes <laughs> with the space I need. However, the problem is, if you cut that off, as you know on these merchant navies, the funnel is very large, very big. If you cut that off, you'll see everything in there. It'll really detract from looking the view down the chimney. So I'm just pondering. Okay, so now just for clarification, um, I'm going to hardwire this TTS decoder in. That's the plan. Um, I looked up on the Hornby website. It, it is just basically like hardwiring a normal decoder in and the functions will still work apparently. Okay, skipped on a few minutes. The Theoretically, <laughs> this is now hardwired in. So the grey and orange to the motor. Uh, let me get a torch. Grey and orange to the motor there. and then the red and black to the track. You have to be a little bit careful on these. Um, while Hornby has marked red and black wires for the loco body and where the motor is, from the tender they've been a little bit lazy and they're both black wires so you just got to keep your eye and make sure you don't cross it over. Right, being very careful, try not to short circuit anything because these TTS decoders are extremely finicky. Um, it's set at number three, or should be, default, and on my Z21 I have a test number three with a few functions on there so that uh, I can just test it. Now let's see if we get some sort of noise. <laughs> that is the problem with Z21 and TTS. So the whistle actually worked on the Merchant Navy, but what you also heard was the Hall class GWR locomotive, which is in the engine shed going off as well. Interesting. And it is a problem with, I believe my Z21 is, uh, they don't really like each other, TTS and Z21. Okay, loco sound. Not very loud, which is good, but it's working. So there's the proof in the pudding, I think. You just need to 
hardwire them as normal and the functions work, which I didn't know. Just turn it off. Let's try that sound and whistle again, see what happens. Nope, the hall is keeping quiet this time. Okay, uh, a slight movement, let's see if it actually works. I don't want to go too far because I don't want to risk any sort of short circuit. Cool. Okay, so it works. Now the big problem, fitting the speaker. So one step closer to getting this done. Um, I have kept the plug. Sort of wondering whether that's a wise idea or not. Um, I could make life very easy and cut everything off there. I guess it depends whether I feel I'm going to use this decoder in another loco or not. It's probably the answer is no. And then this speaker, I don't have anything smaller. I don't have sugar cube or anything like that, which is, would be ideal at this moment. So, um, coffee time, ponder time. So first attempt to get the chassis back in the body. The speaker is, the chassis is now sitting on the speaker here at the front. It's about two mil too big, and there's two mil in it. Um, the only way I can get that round speaker to fit is to chop away that piece of the plastic funnel I showed you earlier, which is underneath. And then I can see it fitting. Um, but then if you look down the funnel from the top, it's going to look pretty ordinary. I suppose you could fill the funnel from the top with a piece of round plastic. Right, I've cut away in there. Um, very, very soft. I have to be very careful the knife doesn't go right through and damage the external part of the loco body. Extremely soft plastic, which is good in one way, but you've got to be a little bit careful. So I'm going to see if the speaker fits and uh, give it a go. So a test uh, placement, the speaker is in and it fits. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is pull it out again and pack the speaker with blue tack. I don't have any black tack, which is probably preferable because blue tack does go off after a while. And in the heat here, it actually melts. All right, my little beauty. Let's put some down there. Actually, that's now moved in the way. She's okay. There. And some in here. Ouch. Okay, it's in. That took a couple of goes, to be honest with you, just trying to get that right. It looks all straight to me. Uh, yep. The speaker is in there. It's not perfect. <laughs> the speaker is in... where are we? There. Um, it's in place. I'd be interested to see what the sound is like going around the layout, coming out of the actual body rather than the tender. That's what I'm trying to achieve. Um, as I previously stated, it normally goes wrong when I try and get the body on. Right, so all I've done is uh, I've put it on the programming track and uh, programmed the correct loco number in. I've put in the functions. And this is where we have tears or not, I think. Those who have watched my videos in the past have seen tears before. Something not quite working there. Let's give that a go. Nope, something's not sitting perfectly there. Ah, I can see. Okay, so it's one of those Hornby connection, tender connections that uh, we all don't really like. If 
from the uh, early 2000s. So there we are, she's on. My got some fingerprints on there which I've been really careful to avoid, but they're on there. Let's see. There we go, okay. Right. Um, moment of truth time. Sound. It's not very loud, unusually. Normally these things blast your head off. There's a whistle. Not too Tyrannosaurus-y this time. Try another one. There are um, 22 functions on this chip. There are actually 21, because there is no function 18 for some reason. Of which, so of those 21 functions, 8 are whistles. I think when they're recording this, they're having a bit of fun. Anyway, let's see if she moves. I can't actually believe this is working because normally when I follow instructions, you know, it's A, B, C, but I get to Z and it's still not working. <laughs> but this is actually working. All right, well, she's in the sidings, so I might move her out onto the main line, which is currently blocked. So I'll just stop her there. Okay, I've cleared the line. Um, we'll send, send her out onto the down line as such on my layout. It's very, very dark today, so um, I probably won't do too many running shots because it really doesn't do justice to the colour on this logo, which is absolutely stunning. But I'll send her out and run around. At least you've seen how to or does actually work to hardwire in a TTS decoder. To say she does sound different from normal steam locos, which is really pleasing, and it's nice to hear it coming from the front. That is cool. I don't know if it's me, but it does sound different coming from the front of the loco. That's great. Happy about that. That's the passing whistle, which I probably pressed a bit too late. So just a couple of observations. Um, I broke the speedo cable. Uh, that's the negative. The positive is it's running better than the... That's the passing whistle again. She's running better than with the other decoder now. There's a happy bunny here today. Uh, I won't do too many running shots because it is very, very dark. There she goes. But I'm happy with that. Okay, so I hope that's useful. Um, 
you made it this far, thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you didn't know how to do that, like I did, and didn't believe that it just works by the normal sort of hardwiring method, then it does. So there's proof in the pudding. So thank you very much for uh, supporting me and being here. Is this child friendly? Probably. Don't know. But uh, anyway, it was worthwhile doing. And it does sound good coming from the front of the loco rather than the tender. Happy about that. So maybe an improvement is a sugar cube speaker one day. Anyway, from Kampala Road, cheers for now.